Hey, Kiki Halliburton here, content marketing strategist for women webpreneurs with big ambitions and complicated lives, and congratulations, you made it. In this video, I wanna explore the fourth and final roadblock keeping you from creating the life and business you love. So what do you do when a goal you set in one area of your life directly or indirectly sabotages a goal you set in another area of your life? You wanna work hard on your business so you can make more money, but you also wanna spend more time with your family. You want to finally take up that hobby and discover yourself by doing things you love, but you also want to cut back on expenses and save money to pay off a debt. Let's face it, there's a lot to do about creating that sought after work-life balance. Some say it's a myth, but is it really? Creating a healthy work-life balance requires setting goals for several areas of your life. But as women entrepreneurs with big ambitions and complicated lives, what happens when those ambitions conflict? paralysis. When you have two opposing goals fighting for your time and attention, you often find yourself stuck between two things you want, which leads to no action. So how do you resolve this conflict? Well, the first thing you want to do is align your goals across each area of your life. A cool way to do this is to create your will of life. It's an exercise created by Success Motivation International and referenced in the book, The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. Now, when I did this exercise, my wheel was out of alignment. Can you imagine driving down the street in a car with wheels like this? I don't think so. What this exercise does is reveal the relationship between how some goals affect others. From mine, I can tell that my actions in my business are pretty good, but I can also tell that I need to redistribute my time so that the other things I want in my life don't suffer. See how that works? Once you're armed with this information, the next thing you want to do is prioritize your goals. Determine what goals get more time and attention because they impact other goals more. For example, we know the more money you make, the more choices you have. So giving more time to my finances can also allow me to say buy healthier food that is often more pricey and improve my physical health. Having more money would also give me the ability to improve my lifestyle and quality of life and etc. Now another type of conflict that can arise in goal setting is when your goal conflicts with your beliefs. Beverly explained previously how self-belief impacts your motivation to act. For example, you want to increase your prices, but you don't want to come across as unfair or dishonest. Your belief holds emotion, and emotion drives behavior. So your beliefs drive your behavior. So in this scenario, what will happen is your belief that increasing your prices will equal a lack of integrity, which will cause you to fall into inaction. Your equation is off balance. You need to work through your self-belief, as Beverly mentioned earlier, to have enough positive emotion to motivate your action. Otherwise, no matter what you write or say, your goal will become unfulfilled. So once you've set your goals for the different areas of your life, you want to weed out and address conflict by asking yourself some questions. Are my goals in alignment? How does one goal affect another? Are you harboring any beliefs or emotionally charged mindsets that conflict with the goal you want to achieve? I hope you found value in this series and have a better understanding for why regardless of your best intentions to go after what you want, you failed in the past and how you can actually overcome these roadblocks keeping you from living the life you want and deserve. Remember, goal setting is not something you just do, it's something you live. And goal living demands new muscles and mindset shifts. It's a process and a journey. And you can have the success you want if you take your time and do it right.